Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all well. This has arrived. This is the Fanatec CSL Elite Steering Wheel McLaren GT3. Um, so I thought I'd give it a, um, just get, open this up so you guys can have a look at it. Obviously it's been on the market a little while, but I've just managed to get my hands on one. Um, so let's just open it up and have a look. Um, and then what I thought I would do is um, get it up and running on my CSL Elite base and have a crack at round nine of my GT3 championship. So, um, yep, some manual, uh, stickers, buttons, and some labels, and then the wheel itself. So I might just uh, pause here so I can get it out and show you guys. Okay, so the wheel's out of the box. Gonna have a quick rundown of all the buttons. You've got two protected uh, buttons here. I feel extremely solid, well made, as do all the buttons themselves. Um, you've got your LSB and RSB buttons here for the Xbox. Uh, I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to bother changing the buttons out or not. As I said before, I don't really look at them while I'm racing. You've got your toggles, which I will um, map to traction control and ABS. You've got your funky switch here, which I will probably map to brake bias. Um, you've also got directional um, up and down, left and right, and push. The clutch selector is here, so the clutch mode selector is here. In A mode, uh, it's clutch by point, so both clutches are active. In B mode, you've got handbrake and clutch, so um, might come in handy for Dirt Dirt 2. Any rally game, you've got brake and throttle in mode C, which I think is, is really cool, especially if you have a disability and you would race or would like to race. Uh, if you're a paraplegic or have lower spine issues, you get uh, to turn these into throttle and brake which I think is absolutely brilliant. Then you have uh, mappable analog axes for mode D. So that's that. You've also got two 12-point mappable switches. Um, the shifters themselves feel really solid. Now I know people have reported issues before, hopefully I don't see that, um, but these feel really solid and reassuring. Uh, this is the, this has got the quick release mechanism already on it. Another thing that I don't think is mentioned very often too is the fact that you get your Allen key um, for removing the original normal release that comes with this. Uh, actually with the wheel it fits in this slot here so I think it's pretty cool you don't have to go hunting for one. Um, and these, these are the clutches. So yeah I'll, I'll stick this on the um, on my wheelbase now and give it a run around Nürburgring GP in the GT3 cars. Okay, so we're in the car. Uh, I decided to run the McLaren 650S GT3. I thought it was only fair, being as I was using the wheel. Uh, I've adjusted the camera so you guys can see the wheel, and I'm going to have a go at a clutch start, which I haven't practiced, so it should be a total disaster. I run a qualifier where I place third out of 20 cars, um, and I've got the uh, skill set to 105 and the aggression set to 35. So let's see how we go. I'll give my thoughts on the wheel as we uh, go through the race. Okay, so clutch in, first selected, see how we go. Not too bad. I thought I'd lose a lose a spot there. That was uh, better than I thought. That was easier to use than I thought it was going to be. Let's see if we can make it through this first corner. I'm sure that bollard will get sent. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> so straight away, one of the first things um, that I, I mentioned earlier in the video was how how the shifter felt really uh, really solid reassuring click and I've noticed that again straight away as I'm driving I don't know if I'm going to be able to hold third these cars are really really strong um, around Nürburgring GP at 105 skill Getting enough enough speed there. Should have been in fifth before I came down to the breaking point. Then so with the wheel, I, I have mapped the uh, traction control to the left toggle switch. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. Just kept it though. So. 
here in, in the uh, in the draw, I'm running traction control off. ABS is mapped to the right toggle. That's set to two in this car. Um, I have set the brake bias to the um, the funky switch. I like the layout of the uh, of the wheel now that I'm actually racing with it. All the buttons are very easy to. Um, oh man, I've overcooked that because I'm talking. Oh, but the, the Merc stuffed it up. <laughs> so did I. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, I've got the uh, the Y button, the, the the Xbox Y button set to my um, in-car menu. Very easy to get to all the buttons. I've uh, I set the two protected buttons to neutral and whoa and pit limiter. Got shunted then by that BMW. Oh, that's that bollard. Wow. So, one th the other thing I've noticed too is that even this wheel is only slightly wider, slightly larger diameter than the, um, the P1 wheel, but um, with the ergonomic grips also feeling like they fit my hands better, um, the wheel feels more substantial. Um, and it, it is, I was expecting it to be a, a lighter wheel, but it's not. With the um, with the quick release on it, it's actually heavier than the um, the P1. And I, I don't know if it's um, just placebo effect, but it feels like force feedback feels a little bit more um, communicative, and, and it's easy to catch a slide with this wheel. And I don't know if that's just, you know, my, it's a brand new toy type of thing. But um, that's, that's certainly how it feels. Build quality seems excellent. Oh, I know that I said before that a, a few people, have, I've noticed a few people online have had issues with the shifters. Hopefully I don't um, run into that problem. But I might do a bit of a longer term review and see how it holds up over the space of a couple of months. I think if issues were going to show up, they'd show up pretty quickly what I've been reading. Now I should point out that this is not a brand new wheel. <coughs> um, the guy I got this from bought this in December last year but was almost immediately gifted an F1 wheel so um, used it a couple of times and stuck it in the box. It uh, hasn't been used since so it hasn't really had a lot of use um, but I did pay for this myself. It wasn't gifted to me. So we'll see how we go with it. Right now I'm really impressed, really, really impressed. The build quality is a lot higher than I was expecting. I've read that, you know, because it's a plastic wheel and it was set to be a lower cost wheel in the range, there were some issues, but um, it feels good. Be interested to see how these, this, uh, this rubber holds up over time. I know that um, certain types of rubber tend to kind of abrade over time and, and look a different shade to the rest of the wheel so I don't know whether I should wear gloves with it or not but oh, I should have shifted down there I'm talking too much Let's see if we can fin this Corvette off because I'm not going to be able to catch that um, Merc unless he makes another mistake on turn one. Oh, sorry the last turn <coughs> might sound silly but I wasn't expecting to be um, I was expecting it to take longer to get used to holding um, an open top open bottom wheel I didn't think about how little you actually move your hands from nine and three so it's actually not that that much of a stretch to get used to it I don't know if it's improving my driving though although I haven't missed a gear shift yet so because that's the test. Okay, 202, that's not too bad. The old 
lucky bollard there. Normally I talk a little bit about the track, so um, obviously Nürburgring GP, famous forever. <laughs> Nordschleife, uh, the first races took part and took place in 1927. Um, here's some key dates: World War II kind of obviously shut the whole thing down. Um, 1947, Sudschleife opened up first. Then 1949, Nordschleife um, repairs, etc., were complete and it was back racing. I think it was May of that year. Um, the first real modernisation and, and safety work was started around the circuit in 73. Um, and then I guess GP circuit as we know it today. I think, I think the first race there was 84, then 85 and then um, kind of short lived because after that it went back uh, in 86, went back to uh, Hockenheim. I think it's one of the, the GP circuits is one of those circuits that um, can kind of grow on you over time. I, I used to absolutely hate this layout, but um, the more I race it, the more I get to, I kind of appreciate it, and I don't mind it now. Oh, that Corvette is all over me. Loving this wheel though, absolutely loving it. Feels great in your, in your hands. The grips are perfect. I love the fact that it's a little bit wider. I'd really like to have a crack in uh, an F1 car with this and see, see how it feels. See if the uh, clutches actually help as well for starts. If we, can, if we can think of it a negative or a couple of negatives one would be um, even though I don't normally run it when I'm recording because it causes glare the change light on the P1 at the top of the wheel is absolutely perfect you just don't have to think at all about when the optimum time is to shift it's just there in your um, periphery there's nothing here to tell you that other than the um, the base lights, but that, that, that top of wheel light on the P1 it was absolutely perfect. Um, the other thing too is the LED display on this, it doesn't even appear in my vision at all, so kind of totally wasted because I don't I tend not to look down at all when I'm racing, um, not even to the buttons, like that's why I won't I won't replace these buttons. But the um, yeah the L C D on this is um, is a waste. Other than for you know configuring, it's not giving me anything while I'm driving. All this displaying is the uh, the gear that I'm in. Um, I wonder if it's possible to adjust the brightness on it and change it and use it as a change light. I'll have to look into that. But other than that, that's that's really it. That's the only downpour I can. I mean, obviously, this is the first race I've had with it. I spent a little bit of time in practice with it, about 45 minutes, but that's that's really it. Did I just balk those two Corvettes behind me? That was a Corvette and Aston. Oh, that Radical is just miles ahead, isn't it? Actually, can't remember where I got this version of Nurburg GP from. I'll have to look it up and stick it in the link in the description if anybody wants to grab it. Um, details quite good, and uh, performance is pretty good too. I'm not getting any popping or glitching or anything on the textures. I 
Aston really um, powered up behind me then, didn't it? Five's a good setting for these cars here. Like it's not it's not easy. I'm having to push to keep that guy off me. And I'm not really gaining on on that Merc at all. Oh, he's made a mistake again. So I am gaining. Got a bit of a flat spot though, you can hear that. Hopefully you guys can hear how solid the gear shifts are. Actually, there is one other, there is one other downside, but I don't think it's it's too big of a deal. It's that all the buttons and the shifters feel really high quality, but the clutch um, paddles are, you know, obviously injection molded, and even though they've got a texture grip on the on the on your finger side on the outer side, inside is the actual exposed structure internal structure and I think it takes away from the aesthetics of the wheel. It's a real shame that it wasn't um, um, a piece of aluminium, the same as the shifter. But that's it, they're my three, three complaints. Okay, pull the way through there, <laughs> through the S's. <laughs> and if the AMG's tyres are going. Oh, he lost it big time. And the last lap, wow. Up to second. Big lock up on the rear, rear right then. I felt that. Oh, my Bollard's still there. Out. I've got nothing to chase, so I'm mucking it up. Man. So, final thoughts on the wheel. Um, overall, absolutely love it. A couple of downsides to it, but I guess one, I didn't pay full price for it for basically a brand new wheel. Um, and two, it is a lower cost offering from Fnatic. So, with those takeaways, I think I think overall it's very positive. I love it, and I'll, I'll definitely be using it. It'll, it'll be my main wheel, I'd say. One thing I have to do is try and figure out. Um, multiple button layouts across wheels uh, in the sims that I drive so I need to figure out how I do that and uh, try and figure out how to not let this Aston get past me before we get across the line because I've completely stuffed up that last lap no 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 don't 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 oh you're kidding oh I gave him room because I didn't want to get destroyed on the second to last corner and he's cut straight past me <sighs> uh.
Oh well, there we go, across the line. Started in third, finished in third. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, uh, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe bell, uh, the subscribe button and the notification bell. And I'll be sure to upload more content soon. Thanks everyone. Bye.